Welcome back. This is not part of your scene. This is part two of Lightning Comic Refu Book Reviews. If you, so the other one ended abruptly. I'm just going to put a second video up. If you uh, have to do two videos to do comic reviews, I think they're not lightning round comic reviews, but whatever. Anyway, I'll just get right back into it. Um, this is Django Fett. And this one does add to the story because you get a little bit of color into the into the uh, continuity of Star Wars. And I know everyone, especially the creators, they get mad. You should want good stories. Not the canon shouldn't matter, but the canon does matter. One of the things that draws me to Star Wars, because really, you know, the eight main movies so far, they're really none of them are that good. And I know that's a sin to say that Empire Strikes Back is actually not a great movie. But really, the, the films are like what I enjoy the least about the series. The comics and the books and especially the TV shows and stuff are really what make the series fun built around the movies. In fact, when I see the films, you know, end, you know, end and begin with no time in the middle, I'm always like, oh, we're not going to get a cool ass cartoon or, or some show like The Mandalorian I'm super excited for, you know. So like the fact that there's so much time between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back is just so fun because we get this huge amount of comics and, and, and books and stuff that can like give you stories about Luke Skywalker becoming, you know, much stronger because there's a jump there, right? At the end of New Hope and at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back, Luke Skywalker is incredibly, gets in a lot of power. Same with the Clone Wars in between episodes two and three. Um, and they really haven't even really haven't done anything with between episodes one and two, which would be awesome also. And then pre number one, not that much in the canon. So I understand the idea that uh, we need to be looking for good stories and we do, but we need to, we need to push the canon too, is what I'm going to say. And that's what makes it the most fun. That's, that's what sets it apart is that all of it is canon. I know there's the legends, but that's a, that's canon too. It's just a separate canon. But all of this is canon. If you're reading the comic book and you find out about Sana, who is uh, Han Solo's wife, that is, it just adds to me when I watch, uh, let's say, Empire Strikes Back. I know that they went on all these crazy adventures, you know, Shatarun and stuff uh, that happens in between episode four and five. Uh, the Clone Wars is the same way. So I like it when I add something to it. Age of the Republic hasn't been doing. Age of Republic, the one-shots haven't been doing that incredibly well. Um, but Django Fett did do it. I mean, they are just filler issues for the most part. And hopefully they, you know, they do something where it's a test on something cool. And then they maybe they have a, a, a six-issue miniseries or a short ongoing, you know, a maxi series or something. Ugh. Did I do any superhero comics yet? Martian Manhunter Venom's not a superhero. So Nightwing, Martian Manhunter, Venom. So this has really probably been the most consistent superhero comic of the last four years or five years, and that's because Jason Aaron's been on it. Um, it's funny, if you go into Star Wars comic circles, they, they really don't like Jason Aaron. Um, but in general comic circles, he can do no wrong. So uh, I really loved his Star Wars run, and of course his Thor run is what he's going to go down um, in history for, in comic book history for. And I, I just can't let it go. I've tried to let some of this superhero stuff go. And, you know, Nightwing, I'm really just seeing where it's going. Martian Manhunter is cool because it's, you know, it'll end. Thor, I've tried to let go, but it's just cool. And, and the art's cool. And, I mean, I don't know if it's the writing or if it's the art or if it's the incredible marketing. But I, I don't think I'm going anywhere. In fact... You're drawing me in to War of the Realms, and I know it's two months away, so that's two more Thor books, and then probably a bunch of Avengers books. I know if I started reading Avengers, I'm going to love it, you know? I mean, he's still on it, right? So he's on it, what, where do we got? 14 issues. He's just a real, he's just a great writer, and it's like, him and Donny Cates are so prolific, and I know they're both great writers, and it's like, well... You just got to dip into both of them or not read anyone else, essentially. Hey, so this one's late. Uh, I mentioned this in the, probably in the new book, Middle West by Scotty Young. Um, this issue was great. You know, it just has this weird fantasy element. 
um, feels like Neil Gaiman, except without the Neil Gaiman tropes. And 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 not that the tropes are bad for Neil Gaiman, but if you read enough about them, you start to see like the leader follower thing is the big one in Neil Gaiman and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So this feels magical and weird, um, like Neil Gaiman, a little bit like Neverwhere, except in the Midwest, let's say. But um, uh, without his tropes, I'm sure Scotty Young has his own tropes. I just haven't read thousands of Scotty Young pages to um, have identified them in my mind. A, so this is an example of something ending. This is The Black Order and... This is not a, this is not a spoiler, it's the last page, but ah, Nova is gonna come or Unova is gonna come and some wreck some shit. Um, it's what you'd expect. It is told by them in, you know, from their point of view, they uh, get in positions where they you could sort of write them as a protagonist, but they're evil. There's no getting around the Black Order being evil. This one was pretty funny, so I'm starting to follow. I'll probably read the first two again, which probably is um, is a compliment. Um, but this one's mostly narrated uh, by I forgot his name uh, by Black Dwarf. Um, you know about him being am I just the brute? Am I just the killer? You know, and then the the plot which is r relatively basic for a cosmic uh, book, Marvel book. You know, the plot is following through, but you you start delving into the individual um, members of the Black Order. So Corpus Glaive has already been done, and I, I can't even remember. Maybe it was done so smoothly I didn't notice, you know. So, hey, Star Wars, the, the, the gang is still on a, what is feels like a vacation, um, all these books, there's been no... So you went that six, hope dies. Everything was in space, 99%, I think. You know, space or a spaceship. And now these last few issues have been all on a planet. And, uh, you know, felt like a little lighthearted, um, you know, with that underlying what's going on here theme. And, uh, you know, we got to a... We got to a point in this book where, uh, you know, stuff has to go down, essentially. And, and even though it's uh, Han in front of there, this is, you know, that's basically the book. It's a dual feeling. Um, I just found out that Kieran Gillen is going to end on 67, so that means we get one more large arc. Uh, and it should be cool, where I've been up and down. I, I don't want to say hit or miss. It's just this stuff's not going to go on my favorite Kill Kieran Gillen stuff. But it it has been pretty good, enough that I've continued buying the issues and, and not waiting for the hardcover like I had been. Um, we get a little view of, of uh, some characters Jason Aaron created earlier in the run here. And that looks pretty cool. Uh, this is really stupid. Um, you know, and I'm sure this is the blue victory. So at the end, Barack Panther wins over Tremendous Trump. But I'm sure it's literally a page that's different because... I'm sure like these two pages are different that shows who wins who because it's, it was dumb. Uh, Moth and Whisper by Ted Anderson. Uh, I've really, I really loved this series so far. I can't tell if it actually ended or if it's going to continue. The, an arc ended here, but uh, I, I'm hoping it's continuing. I really, really liked it. This is definitely a book that is, um, that I'll, I'll never say those comic gate people are right. But this is definitely a book where the ones that are not so um, fanatical about it are right in a way. I want to see, you know, um, I want to see all the LGBT stuff. I want to see all of it, you know. But I didn't really notice that the main character in this was. And then they, they really sort of forced it in at the end. And it just stuck out. And so I can... You know, for me, it's just something to comment on. It was like two panels. It was like, oh, that was weird to force that in. You know, in five issues of something incredibly great. And it's not surprising. I mean, Aftershock, they tell you right here, you know, this is, we have uh, diverse characters and worlds. The, the character was sort of drawn very gender neutral. And so maybe I just figured it anyway. I don't know. So that part stuck out. But the book has been really cool, and that was the only part where it was like, oh, that feels forced or, or not good. Like I said before, number one 
It was probably my favorite single issue of the year last year uh, because it, it was just a good story on its own um, and it really added to the whole arc. So I'm going to keep buying this. Moth and Whisper has been great. The concept is great, especially if you want something on the, um, on the level of, uh, you know, spyish stuff with a, you know, a superhero twist. Outer Darkness. Man. I don't want to say I'm having trouble with the art because I think the art is actually cool. And now that I'm on the third issue, it's growing on me. But man, it just feels like it's, does it, maybe it does fit because it is real extreme, but I mean, this is the second issue, so it's not, not a spoiler. Some people get cut in half and stuff, you know, but I think what, uh, what I'm getting from Afu Chan and whether it works is that it's not a ton of lines. Um, I think a good comparison, right, would be Scrimshaw almost, uh, or a contrast, I should say. So you see how, you see how, um, Dave Mims in Scrimshaw uh, and it's not even detail, but he just works with heavy lines and, and a lot of lines through everything, um, to, to, you know, show facial expressions and just to show age and stuff where, um, I mean, I might be an idiot. So there's line work here, but the vibrant cover, the vibrant colors, for example, are take more precedence. So anyway. The book's awesome. I'm going to continue to read it. Uh, it's just been really good. At not what I expected at all. It's not right to call it Star Trek meets Event Horizon. It's more like Star Trek meets The Exorcist in space. I don't know. I'm just saying stuff. Hey, another Star Wars book. See, if you put these in order, I could have got done with Star Wars talk. Um, issue one was horrible. Issue two was... Not bad, not good. This issue was actually good. So the story sort of slowly rising. The problem is, is that, okay, it just shows us where he was when he was an Imperial cadet. Um, I almost feel like you could get a lot more out of this. What it does do <coughs> in its cartoony nature is sort of cut down the way that we've seen the, the Empire and the way they train stormtroopers, you know, because it's already the third issue and beer. And Han Solo has gotten away with way more stuff, way more stuff than you would expect anyone to get away with in uh, training uh, at, to be an Imperial cadet. Hey, this is from Wednesday. Um, I've been grabbing, to be honest, they're different enough. Uh, the, this Tomasi run, since he took it over. And um, I'm trying not to like Batman. I say that with Batman shirt on. I'm trying not to like Batman as much because he's everywhere and there's a lot of it and I'm getting, getting over Batman, which I know for some of you is crazy because, you know, Batman is the reason you're a comic book fan and stuff. But, I mean, just Tom King and Tomasi, who writes Detective Comics now, have just been really good and different enough that, that it's, it doesn't feel like I'm just reading two Batman books, you know? So, I mean, I really love it and... Um, and it's uh, Doug Mankey too, so it is the that's a, a classic sort of team or uh, people with a history of Batman, and I just really like it a lot. Here's my here's probably my favorite Batman picture of a long time, and uh, if I think about it, I might just turn it to a poster or something. It, it's too bad he's not fighting a real criminal; he's fighting someone he makes up with right away. But there's Batman saying, bring it on. And so I thought it was cool. Uh, action was really good. It's uh, reminiscent of the Tom King um, where he fights KG Beast. And um, so this fight scene is a lot like that. It really well, um, really well plotted, only drawn, not a ton of, not a ton of dialogue. So that's what I look at artists, especially, especially in comic books, is how do you tell the story with the art, not just the splash page, which is obvious, right? The only difference is this is much shorter. So I can see, you know, I can see Tom King or in the, um, I forget who drew the Tom King issue. I can see how like, okay, that would get tiring because it was essentially a whole fight and a, 
like literally Tom King wrote a fairy tale into that book. So it was this fight scene, the whole page, and then maybe like 35% of it was a fairy tale. So experimental over there, typical here in the Detective Comics run, and really good. So I'm glad they're different. You know, I grabbed the stuff that involved music. Um, oh, I didn't realize this is really cool. Um, I didn't realize it's a fake flyer for the band that's involved here. This is not a good cover, and I'm not saying it's not good in the sense that um, it's a bad drawing or something. It's not good because it doesn't even look like what's going on in there in, in the book, you know. And if I have something bad to say about the book, I mean, it's a lot of dialogue and dealing with... Um, uh, dealing with signing a record label and even this sort of like cool insert this is two pages of this where it sort of explains the way the record industry works um, is that you don't realize really what's going on until the until the hook at the end which I'm looking at but I won't show you um, so it hooked me as far as like going to buy it some more but it's it's not the best issue as a whole um, but that last page makes me go well this is going to be cool so, anyway, that is Gunning for Hits and Rugvi, if I'm pronouncing his name right. He's a new writer, Jeff Rugvi. So, had a lot of history with, like, Raiko Disc and, and uh, was in the music industry and decided to start to write comics. So, Prodigy, it's cool. Second issue, it's still a little bit, you know, Batman-y. He's very powerful. I know Russian. I know Aramaic. Uh, I've discerned that you're 32 and have a, you know, he's a little bit douchey to me so far. He's written very douchey. You guys know how I feel about Prodigy. And Punisher, literally read this, well, I guess it's been 30 minutes now because this video has gone long. But um, it's cool. He's in Baglia. Uh, Baron Nemo shit, so it's not like explicitly mob boss killing, you know. So uh, it's, you know, Punisher on sort of a higher terrorist level. Probably the funniest. We're gonna give Baron Mio. We're gonna give Baron Nemo the funniest uh, line here, and he says he wants to have the labor union killed, and he tells his like uh, his handler, uh, "Have them fucking killed." Didn't say fucking. I need fifteen minutes of me time. Is that too much to ask? That was funny. Um, the 15 minutes of me time was a room torturing Frank Castle. Uh, that's not a spoiler for a few pages. So anyway, that was a lot of books. I read a lot of books today. I thank you guys for watching. If you got through two videos, that's awesome of you. Not part of your scene. You can find me on Instagram. Um, I got a, I got that stack I showed last time. Um, I really got to read Wicked and Divine. Uh, I'm sick of trying to avoid spoilers when I'm such a Kieran Gillen fan. And, uh, and a couple other things. Theoretically, I would love to have, you know, really talk about these books, not for 16 minutes, but like for five or something like that. But this is what we're doing now. Thank you guys for watching. Um, this has been the Lightning Round Comic Call Part 2, going on 30 minutes. So you guys have a great day.